oils, fats. You would think that it's like this easy thing to navigate, but look at what's in front of me. It's crazy. A wall of oils. And believe it or not, there are so many hidden traps here. So we're gonna break them all down. I'm here with Bobby Parrish from Flav City. You've probably seen his channel on YouTube. He's got a huge YouTube channel doing tons of grocery store things, ingredient reviews, all kinds of different stuff, similar to my grocery hauls, but slightly down a different avenue. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure you check out his channel down below. Bobby, what are we gonna, what are we even looking at here? Like so what's interesting. I remember growing up, we didn't have this selection, sure. right? Now you have avocado, almond oil, coconut oil. So I think the key is to understand how refined, how processed some of these oils are. And even though some are premium and really good for you, they're expensive. So sometimes you want to deep fry or do something shallow fry. What's a trade down, right? Because not everyone has the money to use avocado oil to deep fry. So we're going to talk about the health benefits of some and the applications of when you can use some for high heat cooking versus lower heat, smoke point. It's very confusing. So I think we can break down a lot of knowledge. That's perfect. Because where Bobby is really strong that I'm not strong on is the world of cooking and things like that. So yes. if we can break that down you can help them navigate that. Sure. I can help navigate the biochem side For of it. Sure. Um, nothing is ever going to be better than getting like your good quality fats from actual good, true, natural sources. So I do want to make sure after you watch this video, you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So ButcherBox is grass-fed, grass-finished meat. So it's going to have a naturally high omega-3 content, which is going to help improve that protein synthesis. It's going to help lubricate those cellular membranes so your cells can actually communicate. So anyway, you can get my special discount on it. Plus it's cheaper than the grocery store when it comes down to grass fed, grass finished meat delivered right to your doorstep. So go ahead and check them out down below in the description. But now let's talk about yeah, some oil here. For sure. So I think we should start off with avocado oil. I love it. Okay. Yeah. There's a few different ones and they're kind of spread all over the place. They are let's spread see. out. I mean, it's not the best price, but we can just grab the 365 brand here. And just from a culinary standpoint, this is a great oil that I would use to replace canola oil because it's a high heat oil. The smoke point's around, you know, 500, so it's not going to burn if you're doing stir fries, right, Thomas? Yep. But it doesn't have a flavor. So sometimes you don't want the flavor of extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil. This is what you want to use. So for high heat, for throwing on the grill, for making stir fries, this is the way to go. Okay. I'd say best price I've ever seen is at Costco. Uh, yeah, thing amazing, yeah. right? So, and then this has a really good health property about oleic acids, right? Yes. So we've got uh, omega nines, which believe it or not, omega nines help reinforce omega threes. So that's something important to know. So omega threes and omega nines work in tandem. So omega threes will get absorbed better along with omega nines, but then avocado oil and olive oil both have what's called oleic acid. Right. Okay. This oleic acid converts into OEA in the body. And I sound like such a broken record with this because I'm just so hot on this recent research. OEA just activates different enzymatic pathways in your body it literally mobilizes more fat so if you're doing a low carb diet this is what you want this is exactly what you want because your body's going to actually be able to utilize those fats better they're not just going to stay dormant uh, not to mention like you said it's amazing to cook with yes. it's also perfect to just drizzle on a salad if you totally. don't want to change the flavor exactly right so. exactly and if you want to make your own avocado oil mayonnaise instead of paying like nine bucks for a jar of like primal kitchen you can make it with this and a pasture raised egg yolk for three dollars i have a recipe on my blog it's so easy you guys. that's perfect so, man. so uh, real quick Hit the audience with what cold pressed is. Yeah, so cold pressed is what you really want to see. It means there's no extra heat added. It's basically like a mechanism that grinds the oil out of the fruit, whether that's olive or avocado, and you're not adding heat to the process, therefore transforming or altering the fatty acid. And when you get to something like canola oil that's super processed, they also add a chemical called hexane. Yes. So cold yep. press is really what you want to see. Some avocados oils say expeller pressed or centrifuge uh, expressed also. That's fine too, but okay. uh, once you start getting refined, like we'll talk about in a second, scary. Stuff okay. Happens. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So this is a pretty good bargain then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Okay. And then another, you know, one of the ones that I like, I'm, I love Mark Sisson. He's a good dude. Yeah. Um, so the Primal Kitchen stuff. Let's see. What we got here. Yeah. Pure avocado oil. Yep. He's got good stuff. Yes. Um, same kind of you know thing here in terms of the health benefits, everything like that. Obviously, on keto, I always recommend a wide diversity of different fats. Get your body acclimated to using different fats. Don't just load up on MCTs because they're very shallow and not nutrient dense. They have their application, but might as well get other health benefits. Not all fats are created equal. We have to know that. Uh, so just you know, big shout out to them. But it, it, I will say it is expensive. It yeah, is it expensive. Is. Yeah. So speaking of what you just said, not all fats are created equal we'll go to what I consider like the most criminal, highly processed oil around, and it's canola oil. Okay. So one of the beauties about uh, shopping here at Whole Foods is they never have the really processed one, they have expeller pressed. So while Thomas and I would probably never use this at home, if you're gonna deep fry and you want a cheaper option than avocado oil, look for expeller pressed. It means it wasn't super highly processed. It goes one step beyond cold pressed. They add like a clamp to it. It does create heat up to 400 degrees, but it's not nearly as bad. So if you buy the big jugs of canola oil from Costco, cheap as can be, right? Yeah. But 
processed refined, you actually change the fatty acid from a polyunsaturated fat to a hydrogenated fat, and they use a chemical called hexane to extract the oil. Devastating stuff. Did you, did you know that when you look at any kind of trans fat that's, a hydro, that's you know, hydrogenated, it stays in your body. It takes 51 days to break down what's called the CIS bonds, the cis bonds, 51 days. So you talk about if you have an inflammatory response to an oil like that, it, you go, okay, you go out to eat, right? And you, you eat at a restaurant. You ever wonder why you feel like garbage for like four days? Yes. Like, what's going on? Because like, you've been eating really clean at home, then all of a sudden you go to a restaurant. Because nine times out of 10, they're cooking with canola oil. And your body is trying to break down these cis bonds of this hydrogenated just garbage. Wow. And your body is just working overdrive. It's almost like you have the flu going on inside your body. It's, totally. it's gnarly. So if you are going to use canola, safflower, sunflower, peanut oil, or corn oil, it has to say expeller pressed. You can go on Amazon and get way cheaper ones, but look, everyone here, expeller pressed. If you go to normal grocery stores, they're not going to be. So I would avoid that. And then we talk about this ghee selection here. This is like best. Yeah, let's jump over. Ghee. Let's jump over to some. some uh, yeah, right. Something good. There's a few different selections here. Ghee, just give you the quick breakdown on ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. What that means is it's butter that has all the milk solids removed and you're left with just pure butter fat. Okay, nothing else but butter fat. Yep. So it means it technically, it's technically lactose free. Although yes. if you're highly, highly sensitive, you might still want to be careful depending on the quality. Um, and then the other thing you have to look at is very low, if any, casein proteins. Yep. You're pretty much just fat. So if you're just introducing dairy and you don't do dairy, your chances are you're okay with ghee. That's what's cool. Totally, yeah. totally. And the flavor is great. And talk about high smoke points with oils or fats that won't burn. This is here because you already burned away the uh, milk solids, exactly, right? Exactly. So this is also great. And the selection here is pricey at Whole Foods, but always look for grass-fed, grass-finished ghee, yeah. right? Very important for nutritional profile. Um, I think Thrive Market has a great price. Some Costco's now carry a big one from Carrington Farms. But this is interesting. This is a non-propellant spray ghee I've never seen before. So if you want to get like a fine mist over like something you finished or if you happen to be eating popcorn, this is really, really cool. It's just expensive. I'm just, so we're holding this one like it's a good thing, right? And then all of a sudden we're like grass-fed ghee and then non-GMO cold press grapeseed oil added really? to it. Really? So it's interesting. it's interesting. Now, they're saying that this is a cooking one. Poor, okay. It's horrible, so it's I get horrible. why they're doing it. Yes, yeah, so you want to stick with this we one. We got to right? hang tight for one second. Yeah. Here, we got staff coming. Yeah. That one's a decent one. This one's better, it's just so expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we're good again. All right, so then now let's take a look at this eat good fat. Okay, again, a lot of them are just going to be, yep. it's just like organic grass fed is just what you want to go for. Why we're, well, another thing I want to add to this is the reason that I always recommend putting this in bulletproof coffee or keto coffee yes. is because if you put straight butter in there, it really isn't going to do good. If you're making scalding hot coffee, you do denature some of the fats that way. This is a stable form. It's a, just a safer form. Yep. Plus, you're going to get the short chain fatty acid benefits of your gut. Basically, yep. it helps restore your gut lining a little bit more. Totally. And then right below, if you talk about these uh, sprays here, it's really quick and very easy. If you ever see a bottle like this, run away. Even if it was extra virgin olive oil, this is a chemical propellant can. Chemicals actually force the oil out. So a lot of makers are moving away from that and going towards this. This is a non-propellant can. You wanna look for an oil like avocado, extra virgin, or coconut oil. This is what you wanna use. And the price here is okay, but they sell a two pack of the chosen food avocado oil at Costco for a fantastic deal. But just stay away from the propellant. I think that's really bad news. Well, and while we're kind of on this note of like kind of cooking oils and things like that, ghee is, ghee is great, but I love messing around with some of these amazing. tallows and things it's like amazing. that because they have really good, nice high smoke points once again, but then you're getting a whole different diversity of fatty acid profiles. Okay. So like, for example, pork fat is going to have a lot more in the way of monounsaturated fats that are stable for cooking, but also really good for, again, oleic acid content, but also a couple of really powerful things there. Bison tallow is going to be a little bit higher omega-3. Bison has different regulation from the federal government than beef does, where they're required to have a little bit more in the way of being grass-fed, yeah. uh, whether it's considered grass-fed or not. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. Totally. Now, Epic, I don't know a whole lot about um, kind of their, their raising conditions or anything yeah. like that. Uh, I, asked I think it's actually 100% grass-fed, and the pork right now is a non-GMO feed pasture-centered. And the uh, usually the, the chicken for their chicken beef sticks are pasture centered. So okay, very it's pretty cool. good. They're Austin based, um, so those are great. Okay, Fantastic. great, and great, great to mess around with. You know what's cool? So this is interesting. Look at this. Okay, look at like pork fat for instance. Highly saturated. Yeah. Okay, that's okay, totally right? Okay. Saturated fat is not a bad thing. Saturated fat is not what gives you heart disease. Saturated fat is not what gives you all these like things that people are talking about. We need saturated fat for the nerves. We need that. 
What's gonna clog your arteries is the inflammation that comes from sugar. Combining sugar with fat, recipe for disaster, right? Yep. Uh, but what I wanted to show you this is saturated, not saturated. Duck fat yeah, is not much saturated fat. There is some settles and then you mix it up and it's still highly unsaturated, which means you have a lot more in the way of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Not as good to cook at a high, high temperature with. Uh, so you know, you, if you're gonna cook with duck fat, I would recommend probably not going above like maybe 375. Yep, 375 which, is about the smoke point. Which is interesting because I believe that's around the same for all, yeah. For fact, all yeah, literally, yep. it literally says, yeah, heat up to yeah. 375. Uh -huh. So you don't wanna be cooking like uh, stir fry, high temperature no. with olive oil. No. Okay? But people also have these misnomers about olive oil. It's not toxic, it doesn't burn that easily. 375 is still relatively high. Mm -hmm. And there's myths going around that people think olive oil is carcinogenic, it's no, 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 no. you can't cook with it. No, it's totally fine. I don't know why no, people think that. The worst thing that even happens, like if you were to cook high heat with olive oil, the worst thing that happens is it goes through what's called lipid peroxidation in your body. Okay, and all that means is that you have a little bit more, it, it, people think it's like toxic. It's not toxic. What's happening inside your body is you have a little bit more reactive oxygen species in terms of just oxidative damage that occurs, but it's not that much. And what happens is every time you have cellular respiration anyway, like your cells creating yeah. energy, you have oxidative stress. It's part of life. It's right. part of just cellular respiration. And from a home cook perspective, if you see the oil start to smoke, AKA burning, just turn the heat down. Yeah. It's very, very simple. Exactly. Where things get really bad is when you're cooking meats and you're charring them, yes. and then you have what are called heterocyclic amines that come up from the char section, basically the fat drips onto something high heat and the char comes up and that creates a big problem. Totally, um, totally. In, in not little bits at a time, just you know, chronically, yeah. right? And then there's two different kinds of coconut oil you can find at the store. There's virgin coconut oil and there's ones that are refined. So this is virgin, meaning it's cold pressed. That's really the kind you want to stick with. The only advantage of refined, where if you see it over here, I think this one, see how it's more liquid and uh, stable? This is better because it doesn't have that coconutty flavor, but I don't like the fact that it's refined. I would stick with extra virgin. And once again, that big tub at Costco is unbelievable. What about raw? So what's the difference? Thing? Like here we've got like, what does, what does raw mean in this case? Yeah, so this is, means 100% that it's the same as extra virgin. Okay. This, this is just a really expensive uh, brand, okay. Artisana, and they have uh, co raw coconut butter. Got it. Same got as it. extra virgin. Okay, that makes sense. Would you ever cook with coconut butter versus uh, coconut oil? No, coconut butter is a great placement for almond butter. And actually I have a recipe for keto fat bread that uses macadamia nuts and coconut butter. Okay. It's fantastic. So I'd imagine if you cook with this, you might get different flavor and you might get some of it burning? Uh, yeah, it's like it w you can't even cook with it. It's too much of a paste. Okay. It's literally the peanut butter version of coconut. Good to know. Okay. And then this is interesting. You ever heard of algae oil? Oh, I'm a, I mean, I love algal oil. Yeah. Okay, so basically like when you look at like fish, for example, right? Yeah. Fish have omega-3s. It's funny, fish don't, aren't magically born with omega-3. That's what's wild, right? So fish eat phytoplankton, whatever, as you go smaller down the food chain, uh -huh. and those eat algae. And they all get their omega-3s originally from algae. So that's what's interesting. So we have culinary algae oil. Yeah. My only concern with this is algal oil, DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, which is very good for the brain. I have to throw some, poke some holes in this. By its very nature, it's a polyunsaturated fat. And the polyunsaturated fats are, should not be stable for, for cooking. So I'm wondering, what do they do? I mean, they've got the, uh, the sofarols in there. But I think for the straight up oil, it's non-propellant. It's just the algae oil. So that's a really good question. Here, read this one. Here's the oil version. Okay. So take a look at that. Same thing. It's just exact same ingredients. Highest level of monounsaturated fat. So that's what's interesting. So apparently it's a, in this case, the monounsaturated. I wonder if they're doing some kind of adulteration. Hmm. Interesting. Um, they market as like the heart healthiest oil on the market, so. Yeah, I just, I would say that this would be phenomenal yeah. to drizzle over a salad. For like, sure. I mean, bar none, probably the best that you could drizzle yeah. over a salad. There's an employee coming. Okay. Yeah. I probably, like, that's pretty cool. Like, I love. Yeah, they sell it at Walmart and uh, people love it there. I don't, I would, I would drizzle it. I would, are we clear or no? Uh, no, we yeah. That's right. I like how they're trying to compare it to olive oil. Yeah, that's interesting. Like 0 0.5, like saturated fat's the problem. It's not. Um, so anyhow, I don't know if I would say it's like the best of the best, but it is definitely something good that you could just on a salad to get some omega-3s. I would say that's pretty cool. Totally, totally. And then going back to olive oil really quick, olive oil is for cooking. Extra virgin olive oil is for finishing. Now you could cook with this. It's just cold pressed and raw and it's expensive. So when you actually add heat to it, you're almost ruining or muting that beautiful raw flavor, whether yes. it's grassy or spicy. That being said, you can get a big tub of it at Costco for extra virgin. And I do cook with that. When you have a really good bottle that's like this size, do not cook with it. You're just wasting good money. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a really good point. I think 
Let's get to some of the more obscure ones really yeah. quick. You know, I think the employees might be getting on to us a little bit <laughs> because uh, generally they're pretty cool here. Okay, I will speak to some of these just because I can know specific benefits of like walnut oil. Walnut oil, one of the highest omega-3 content again, uh -huh. but also would mean not good to cook with. These, in my opinion, are probably the kinds of oils that you would use as delicacy oils. So yes. like if you weren't doing keto, it's the kind of oil you might dip some bread in, yes. right? Just to get a different yes. flavor, things like that. Fats and carbs, if you watch my channel, we have you know all kinds of reasons not to be doing that. So we have uh, what are called acylation stimulating proteins, ASPs. When we consume fats, we spike our insulin a little bit, but when it's done with carbs in tandem, huge insulin yeah. spike, which means a lot of storage. Totally. Um, so I can tell you out of these, I would say walnut oil is gonna be the best, hazelnut oil a close second, and then pumpkin seed oil would actually be really, really good. Pistachio oil I can't speak to because I don't know yeah. much about the fatty acid profile there, but what about any culinary applications that you can think of with these? Yeah, so that's a great question. Number one, they're expensive oils, as, as you can see by the price tag. So these are finishing oils. You do not cook with these. Yep. You drizzle at the end, you use for dipping for bread, or, or you use them for salad dressings. So you okay. do not add Good heat enough. to these because they have such a delicate flavor, you're gonna ruin them. You're therefore your wasting your money, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then they have something here that I've never seen before, almond oil, and it's expeller pressed, and when Thomas and I filmed the next video for my channel. We're gonna do well, like the top 10 healthiest junk food here at uh, Whole Foods. Over in the chip aisle, there's a really good chip fried in almond oil that I think you're gonna like. So just really cool to see, you see stuff you've never seen before. I've never seen almond oil. Before. Okay, well that's a great segue into uh, peanut oil. Yep. What's your thoughts on peanut oil? Uh, I would avoid it at all costs. The only time you wanna buy it is once again, always look for that word. When you're looking at commoditized oils, if it doesn't say expeller pressed, I wouldn't use it. And once again, it's only for like deep frying. Because when you're frying, you're gonna add maybe like a liter yeah. of oil. And hey, listen, you got, unless you got deep pockets, you don't wanna be wasting avocado oil. Expeller pressed non-GMO peanut, expeller pressed non-GMO canola, safflower, yeah. sunflower are okay for deep frying. Okay, well let's give them, let's give them the kind of a, a, an order. Yes. Okay, if you're gonna deep fry. Yes. Best of the best would be to use some avocado oil, right? Yeah, that's the best. Okay. Then what's, what's gonna be second place? I'd say non-GMO expeller pressed sunflower oil. Okay, and yeah. next, third place. After that, non-GMO expeller pressed canola oil. Okay. After that, there's nothing. You don't want to go to refined process. Okay. Canola. Okay. So that's the, that's the three there. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that way you have some cheaper alternatives yep. just in case. Um, we're going to wrap it up here in just a second. Sesame oil, uh, really hard to get good quality sesame oil. Yeah. Uh, I would take sesame oil over peanut oil though. Agreed. But if it's toasted like this one, mm -hmm. it's a finishing oil. If it's not toasted like that one, it's a cooking oil. That is very good information to know. So toasted finishing oil, you'd want to put that maybe, you know, a good example would be maybe you finished up cooking up some, uh, some stir fry. Yeah. You want to give it a little flavor. Keto fried uh, rice. Yep. That perfect. Cauliflower, so like, but it, that's yeah. perfect. This could be used for cooking. Yes. But again, I mean, it's fairly expensive. It is expensive. And then we do have the organic one, only a dollar more for organic. No-brainer. No brainer. No brainer. No brainer there. And obviously there's a lot more that we could go into detail so here. Much so here this crazy. I do invite you to check out Bobby's channel, but also in the comment section below, if there's different oils you yes. want to know about, just please understand that, you know, we're in a public store yeah. and we have to try to just get this as a uh, time totally. convinced as possible. Totally. So anyway, keep it locked in here on my channel. Check out Bobby's channel. We're going to do some more videos, awesome collabs. As always, thank you. See you soon.